I've mentioned this before in this channel, but I really have a special place in my heart for DIY devices and kits. The SBC market has really exploded in recent years, making it easier for a new generation of people to get into programming and engineering. The Clockwork Pi is one of the most popular kits on the market right now, and for good reason. This is a retro handheld that virtually anyone can build with little to no technical knowledge. In my quest to cover everything handheld, today we are going to review the Clockwork Pi. The Clockwork Pi is powered by an all-winner R16J clocked at 1.2GHz and a Mali 400MP2 GPU. The current model comes with 1GB of RAM, 16GB of SD card storage, a 1050mAh battery, a 2.7-inch 240p RGB display with HDMI out, and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi for connectivity. Now, I've already gone ahead and assembled my unit because I think that's half the reason to buy something like this. The entire process is fairly seamless and should take you around an hour to build. This is what my finished unit looks like, and I'm using the LEGO backplate for more input buttons with this extra module, but you can use the smooth backplate if you're going to be playing systems that don't need extra buttons. With the faceplate removed, you can see just how modular this entire thing is. Every component is neatly packaged in its own clear case that connect and stack on one another. Aside from the back shoulder bar, this thing is pretty comfortable in the hand with a very good grip. Your CPU sits at the top of your unit, so your hands shouldn't really get too hot when you're playing this, but I have noticed that this thing can heat up when I'm playing N64 and PS1 titles. On the top of the chip module, we have our power button, mini HDMI, micro USB for charging, and a headphone jack. All of these are labeled on the back plate module. The keyboard module is unfortunately not the best. The top keys are made of a soft material that feels comfortable in the hand, but the D-pad and ABXY keys are made from a really hard plastic that I don't feel works really well in this package. For one, I've noticed that it can be hard to use the D-pad for some faster inputs because it has the ability to move around in its slot. The ABXY keys also suffer from this, but I don't find that it has a big impact on my play. Because this system is so modular, it's entirely possible to just make a new set of buttons and use them in the case if you wanted to upgrade this. On the bottom of the device, we have our stereo speaker module, which I find perfectly adequate for this system. I've covered a lot of devices at this point, and speakers seem to be an afterthought for some companies, but this one is actually pretty good. We do have dedicated volume keys here, but you will have to use a combination of keys to change levels in games. This is a sample of the audio from this device. The screen is the next thing that I want to talk about before jumping into some emulation. This is a 240p screen, which I'm completely fine with in a system this small. In fact, the majority of consoles that I've covered so far are 240p, but those screens are better than the one in this product. The viewing angles are really the only thing that I don't like in this package because you won't be able to see this screen if you're looking from the bottom up like I was for most of this review. Going into 2020, I don't really feel like products like this should be made with anything less than an IPS screen at this point, and it would be nice if Clockwork were to sell an upgraded screen module for this kit. Now, onto software, and this is another area where I've come across some complaints online. The simple fact is that this system is still being built, albeit rather slowly. The version that I'm using in this video was released a few months ago, and it's only version 0.4. The system was designed to be intuitive in some aspects, but in others it can be kind of obtuse. If we head into the About menu, we can see that this device is almost using a bleeding edge kernel for some reason, and this is something that is not common in this market at all. The image that I'm using in this review is actually the one that I think everyone should use. It's the DEOT, and it's available for download on the Clockwork forms. It comes packaged with all of the emulators that you're going to need, plus a new launcher. However, I've changed the launcher back to the standard one just for the sake of filming this review. In terms of loading games and ROMs on this device, the Tiny Cloud feature is probably the most user-friendly feature that I've seen in a Pi-based system. I was able to easily load all of the ROMs that you see in this review just by using Wi-Fi in my File Explorer window. There are two different GPU settings that you can use in this device, and you will need to mix and match them depending on what you're doing for the best performance, as the Lima GPU driver is still classified as experimental. There are a few bugs that you will also have to contend with, and I can show you one of them now by loading up RetroArch. You can see now that I have the top entry highlighted, but the moment that I move from this entry, the entire green selection disappears. 
This makes it super annoying to change any setting on the system if I'm using the Lima driver. I'll cover more things like this in the next part of the video. Now let's get into some emulation. You can see that we do have a bunch of built-in emulators on this system. Let's kick things off with MAME, as that's one of the systems on this device that seems to work the best. NES is also very good, but this is a system that I need to run on the software GPU. Using the Lima driver for one of these systems will result in better performance, but it will also crop out a big portion of your screen. I have to say that I'm pretty disappointed with SNES performance on the whole for the simple fact that no matter which emulator I use, there is always a large amount of screen tearing. You can easily see this in games that side scroll very fast like Super Mario World, but it's less obvious in titles that move slower. Game Boy and Game Boy Color are also a little iffy on this device, and you will need to mix and match both emulators and GPU settings in order to get perfect performance, which is something that really shouldn't be that difficult with a chip this powerful. Oddly enough, it actually isn't that difficult to get good performance on GBA, but you will need to switch between the two emulators that ship with this image until you get one that runs your title the best. You can see this in action right now with Mario Kart. I tested a few games out with PS1, and I think it performs very well on this system, but this is almost a given with how good the rearmed version of PSX for all is. That being said, you will need to do some minor tweaking to get more demanding titles to play at decent frame rates. A little while back, a version of Mupin was ported to this system, and I was honestly surprised not to find any coverage of this on YouTube when I was starting this review. I spent a good amount of time testing out a ton of titles with this version of Mupin, and I was honestly surprised just how well it could run some titles even though we are still using poor GPU drivers. There are some games that outright will not run at all, and others that will have really strange graphical issues, but I was able to get a good collection of games that ran well for this showcase. This updated model comes with HDMI out, and I don't really feel like it's ready for prime time at this point. I tested a bunch of things on this, and I don't really like the performance from this feature as it currently stands due to how inconsistent things are. Hopefully this is something that will improve with later releases. This brings us to the end of the review. The Clockwork Pi is an all-in-one kit that can be used to make a retro handheld in under one hour. The device currently retails for $140, which is a little expensive, but it remains the most user-friendly package on the market to this day. As I've already said, half the reason for purchasing this kit really comes from constructing the device itself. I love the module design of this entire thing, and aside from doing some cable management in the dark, I had a smile on my face the entire process of making this. If you or someone else in your family is interested in tinkering with Pi Bay systems, this would make a great gift. 
That being said, the developers of this product need to continue fleshing out the current software to make the package better. My name is Taki, and I've been your host on this review. If you like what you saw here and you want to support the channel, please consider dropping a like below and subscribe to the channel for more handheld reviews. I'll catch you here next time with another review. Now go out and enjoy the rest of your day. Taki out.